Hi! In this episode we are going to create vector halftone maps with sizes based on values from a raster layer. So in this episode I was thinking about trying some uh, geometry generators for styling uh, vector layers based on values from a raster layer. And uh, I hope you know what a half tone styling is. That is, uh, when uh, newspapers print, they sometimes use these little dots that are varying in size to uh, uh, make the appearance of uh, darker and lighter colors. And I think that would be pretty nice to uh, represent an elevation map like this. So I will be using just a generic world elevation data layer. And uh, there are a number of them available on the internet for, for free. So just Google world elevation data download or something like that. And you can find uh, a number of... Uh, sources for it. It doesn't need to be really high resolution depending on the area you want to use. I will be using global data so uh, that is uh, one parameter for this example. And you don't have to limit yourself to the data that is over the ocean uh, floor or the ocean surface uh, level. You can uh, get uh, bathymetric data i think it that it's what it's called so you can see the topography of the ocean floor uh, as well and use that but uh, i will be using just a simple layer like this so right now i have just styled it uh, with um, updated canvas and it's from uh, white to black so it's just stretched over band one and um, and uh, it will update wherever I pan the map. So hopefully this style I'm working on will work on all, uh, all the extent of the map eventually. Uh, I've done this previously a few times, so hopefully everything will work, but I haven't <laughs> saved any notes for it. So there might be a, a few problems, but, but you will come along on that journey as well. Um, so, uh, since I want to use vector layers to style this, I will have to uh, have a vector uh, layer to start with. And for this, I'm just going to create a, a temporary scratch layer. So, this will be my half tone map or half tone layer. Um, Half tones are dots, uh, so it would be easy to assume that this should be a point geometry. Uh, however, since I'm going to use geometry generator, uh, the geometry I choose here really doesn't matter that much. Uh, it will matter uh, since in order for the geometry generator to generate geometry, there need to be a geometry in the map canvas. So if I use points, I really need to make sure the point I create are in the extent of the map canvas I want to uh, use. And uh, it is not recommended to add multiple points since the geometry generator will run once for each geometry. And um, if I put in five points to cover the globe. Uh, then, And if I have all those five points visible at the same time, the geometry generator will run five times. And since these processes um, tend to become pretty slow, pretty fast, uh, I wouldn't recommend it. So I will instead use a polygon layer and uh, I make this the same uh, EPSG or coordinate system as the background data uh, just for simplicity. And I don't need anything else. 
just that and I just create I'm interested in Europe the, uh, for this but you could basically make a large polygon for a large area but I'll, I'll just create a smaller geometry I'll make it like that that's fine okay save it like that and uh, now I need to do some changes so first of all it should not be a simple fill it should be a geometry generator working with geometry generators is really powerful but it is really easy to get lost so I will try to show you how I work with it uh, so that I can verify my expressions step by step uh, so first of all uh, I want to generate points and just to verify that that works let's make a centroid for the current geometry so just a centroid like that yes we have a point let's make that bigger so we can see it maybe like that and let's make this bigger so you can see what I typed in I am like that centroid geometry and uh, as long as my polygon is visible there will be a point in the center of that geometry so let me open the expression dialog um, I will move this in and out a bit and uh, when, when I work with it so uh, hopefully I won't hide too much uh, first of all I want my geometries to be a pattern a point pattern with regular intervals and um, I've tried a few different ways and the best way that is that works fine on uh, more than one type of um, coordinate system is not to specify the distance between the points uh, but uh, the number of points that should be visible on screen or in the map canvas so I will start by generating a variable for that so let's say with variable and let's call that one uh, uh, density I hope that is how you spell it that's how I spell it right now so uh, to start with let's make it 30 points wide and the expression will be under that um, since the distance between the points is not a density it's an actual value I need to generate that uh, distance variable as well so let me create another variable and let's call that distance and the value of that is the map canvas width and that's a variable as well and you find all variables uh, in QGIS on here so map extent width so let's place that and that should be divided by the variable for the density so then city and then we will uh, have the expression here and we will close both those variable uh, functions so here is the number of points uh, wide so let's put in an, a comment oops number of points wide like that uh, 
Okay, we have a density, we have a distance. Let's generate the point pattern. And we will do that by uh, rows and by columns. And uh, that need an array. So uh, we could go here to array and search for it here. Uh, but I know that it is for each, this one. That takes an array and an ex expression. So array for each. And the array I want should start at the... Let's start with the, the x value. Uh, that should start with x mean of something and go to the x max of something. Uh, but I want that to be a bit more dynamic. So instead of typing in the array, I will generate the array. And uh, I can do that by a function generate series. So let's put that on a new line. So generate series. And the start value should be x mean of the map extent. Var uh, variable map extent and it should stop at the x max for the map extent variable and the step should be the distance variable can i get rid of that so at distance Let's close the generate series. Now we are in the array for each. Uh, and that one, array for each, now takes an expression. So here we should have the expression for the array for each fun function. See, we have closed it. And this array for each is the columns. And now I need to do the same for the rows. So I'll just copy that and make this rows. And it rows are in Y axis. So let's change it to Y mean and y max it's still the distance is the same and uh, i now need to close that as well so let's just add another parenthesis and as you see i haven't closed it all i'm missing a parenthesis now i have closed that one that one that one and that one yep so here i should have the expression for my uh, point generation i have generated x values and y values and these will loop around uh, for the entire uh, visible part of the map however all these array for each they generate a variable called element uh, and since I have two of them, that is not really practical. So instead of um, um, trying to debug problems from that, I will create new variables for those element variables. So here in the expression, I will have a new with variable and I call that element x, x. And the value should be element. And then we have the expression that we need to close again, like that. Uh, so now the new variable element x will be assigned the value of element from this array for each function okay 
that variable will live uh, in the entirety of the rest of the expression. So let's do the same here with variable element y and that should be also the variable element but this time it will be in, uh, associated with this array for each function and let's close that with a variable as well so hopefully all parentheses are now closed and you will not see all of them because they are up here can make this a bit bigger and here we now can create the points and uh, let's make a comment like that and let's make a point and a point takes I'm not sure why this doesn't work right click no oh, click with control button should uh, bring it up here but it doesn't so let's search for make point x and y that's what it takes so we take element x and element y to create this and as you see here we have uh, point geometries generated however this will not be a valid result since these are lists within a list uh, so we need to combine all the points into multi-part uh, geometries and we need to do that that both for the rows and the columns so let's see where we should put this so uh, we have array for each that generates the points and that array should be combined into a new geometry Uh, collect geometry I think that is collect geometries yes so collect all those geometries as you see here now it is one list with multi points and then we need to also collect the, the geometries from the columns do it like that collect geometries and close that as well and now we have a multi-point geometry so hopefully this will have generated my points in the map let's see yes it did so as long as my original uh, polygon is in view on map this point pattern will be generated but as soon as I pan the map where the uh, let me bring that path where the polygon is not visible uh, it will disappear so as long as a part of the polygon is visible the pattern will be generated okay so now we have points generated and we can control the let me make that a bit bigger uh, smaller and we can control how dense this pattern is so if I type in 50 here instead it will be denser 10 it will be really sparse but for now I'll leave it at 30 because that's quicker to render uh, now I want the points to vary in size and uh, I can't do that by varying the point size uh, because point size these are not points they they are not actual geometries um, they are the the 
anything I do with these markers connected to geometry will be connected to the original polygon, not the generated points. So in order to have this work, I need to do something inside the geometry generator. And the simplest way I've found is to uh, create polygons instead of points and buffer the points I have uh, created here. So I think I'll jump in here. Let's make it bigger again. So or, I know that everything works and these points are the ones I want to work with. So I uh, can limit my editing in this script to this area. And if ever, uh, anything goes wrong, I know that this is the area where I have my, uh, my error. So let's add a buffer. And that takes a geometry. Oh, nice. I have my geometry right here. Uh, let me open the help buffer. And it takes a distance. And let me just make up a distance. Point 0.1 uh, degrees. And then close the buffer. So now I have a multi-polygon. Let's look at that. Nothing. That's why I need to change from point geometry to polygon geometry. And there we have the points. Uh, let me change that to 4. Yep, seems to work. Uh, now I need to collect values for the point size from the raster layer. And uh, in previous versions of uh, uh, QGIS, that could be a bit cumbersome, but nowadays it's <laughs> quite simple. So now I know that this buffer works, and I want to work with uh, uh, this value. So let's isolate that with a new comment. Point size. So this is what I'm going to work with. Um, I need to get the raster values. And there's a nice function called raster value that takes a reference to a layer, a band, and a point. And I want to reference this layer and I have a point, so this should be straightforward. So let's make a raster value uh, from the layer that is named MN30 underscore GRD. And it should be the first band, and it should be the same point as this one. So just copy that function. And let's close that one. So now we have a multi point geometry uh, with a buffer based on the value of the raster layer here. Uh, I'm not going to apply this and test it because. I know that the values in this vast uh, layer is really big. So I need to scale that value first. Uh, and the rest of value that I get here should be uh, scaled, linear, or exponentially. Uh, and since my data has an abundance of low values and uh, re a really few high values, I would choose to use uh, a, an exponential scaling. And that takes the value. We already have that. And I need to tell it what the value, in what domain the value uh, exists. Minimum, maximum. And I, want to, I need to tell it the range of the resulting value. Minimum, maximum. And I need to 
uh, use an exponent. So I have the value. I need to let's bring that uh, help. The domain min, and that's zero. The domain max, uh, let's just say 4000 for now. And then uh, the ma uh, range min, that is zero. I want my points to possibly be uh, zero buf uh, buffer size. And the max should be, let's try zero point. No, I have a distance variable here. Let's use that one. Distance. And the exponent, uh, let's start with one and close this one. And now I have a problem. I think I've forgot a parenthesis somewhere. Buffer. Let's look at the help. Uh, raster value function go is yep, 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 yep. Okay. Raster value uh, should be closed here. And then I have one too many, I think. Uh, you see what I mean, that it is easier to debug uh, faulty expressions if you step-by-step uh, step build your expression. So now I only had to uh, debug this part of the, the expression. And the more you work with expressions, the easier it becomes for you to uh, spot the errors. So now I have collecting a value from the raster layer. Um, and I scale that exponentially. And um, yeah, I think we could uh, take a peek at the results. Yes, it looks like it worked. Uh, now I can fine tune this row. Let's make a comment here. So it looks like we only have a few big blobs and uh, a lot of small ones. Uh, so let's change the exponent to 0 0.2. And uh, maybe the mountains are bigger. And uh, let's make it 4, 0 0.4. Uh, closer and distance okay we have a lot of high parts here so let's make it eight and it's probably more like it let's make it a point without outline and make it black I'm pretty pleased with that one. Uh, however, if, if I turn off the background, uh, it could be hard to see the result. So now I can bump up the density. So if we take 50, it is a bit more uh, visible. Oh, it was 60. Let's take 100. I'm pretty pleased with that. And uh, the the bigger the density you use, uh, the slower uh, this style will be. So, for instance, if you go really crazy and take uh, five hundred, uh, you will need to have some patience. And uh, eventually, you will uh, 
create a map with too high a number and QGIS will probably crash, but this one worked. And um, this is not a practical styling for a dynamic map, um, like a web map or something like that. But uh, if you want to generate a, um, a graphics for a poster or something like that, th this could be a really nice uh, styling option. Um, let me bring that down so it's not that slow. And you can uh, render the results to a, a raster file or an SVG file. Uh, and depending on what you choose, uh, the resulting files can be uh, processed further in uh, other uh, graphics software. So hopefully this uh, has uh, given you some idea and uh, helped you become uh, better at working with the geometry gen generators and uh, the expression builder uh, in general. Um, see you next time!